Hi everyone! Welcome to Artsonia's After School Art Club. Today, we have a fun art project from Carla Ganim, an art teacher from Ohio. Hope you enjoy the video and don't forget to have your artwork uploaded to your Artsonia gallery. Hi everyone! My name is Carla Ganim and I am a middle school art teacher in Strongsville, Ohio. Today, I'm here to do a fun and very cool art project, which is this winter landscape. It looks like it might be difficult, but I guarantee you're going to make a beautiful, successful picture just like this one I have here in just a few simple steps. So I'm going to let you know the supplies that you need. You should have most of them laying around your house. The first thing you're going to need is white paper to create your artwork on, and then also a white piece of scrap paper we're going to use. I'm just using computer paper. You'll need masking tape. I use the blue painter's tape. It comes off nice and clean chalk pastels. I'm using a scrap piece of cardboard for a messy mat. You can use whatever you'd like for that. I just take an old box and cut the sides off. Make sure you have a parent help you if you're going to do that. For the painting portion, we're going to use black and white acrylic paint, paint brushes, and a paint cup with water. And lastly, we'll need a little bit of scrap cardboard. So again, just from the same box I used to cut this part off, I just cut a little tab off. Again, have a parent help you. You can use scissors or a box cutter to cut that. Scissors cut this pretty easily. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started on making our winter landscape. Your first step to getting started is deciding which orientation you would like your paper. If you would like to have it a landscape like mine, you might be able to fit more trees in. You can also do it portrait style where you might fit less trees in, but it'll give you a different look. So for this one, I'm gonna go ahead and do portraits so I can show you one of each of these. And I have my paper and my scrap paper. So this scrap paper is going to be used to tear a horizon line. I like the torn look, it gives it a nice natural snowy effect. So make sure that paper is just a little bit bigger, if not the same size as the paper that you're working on. The masking tape is going to be used to first tape down your original paper. So I'm just going to tape these two ends. That way it won't move on us. And then I'm going to use it to roll up about three or four pieces to adhere this snow tube. One in the middle. If you're doing it horizontally, you might want a few more. You really don't want any chalk pastel to be getting under here. Flip this off. Flip it over. And start at the bottom. You can really have this horizon line wherever you want. You do want to make sure you have it high enough so that you have room to create these shadows that are cast by the trees. So I chose a color scheme of warm colors to do my background with. I made it a little bit different than the cool colors I used here that blended into the yellow. So I'm just going to start, you do want to make sure you test these out first to make sure you like it before you start going right in on your final. Notice how I'm laying down the chalk pastel. You don't want to draw with it like a crayon. You want to lay it down and make sure you get enough of that dust on the paper. That's really what you want to blend it all together. So I'm just kind of gradually blending them in. Dark colors, this dark orange and this dark red, I'm going to use very sparingly because sometimes that leaves a little bit too much of the dark streaks and I don't like how that ends up looking. And maybe this goes up into a little bit of a pink sky or I could even add a little bit of blue up here. And the cool thing about chalk pastels is you can layer them so if you don't like how this looks, layer it with another color. And using a paper towel, you can just use your finger, start blending these, go all the way off of the edge. There's no white areas. See all the dust that I'm creating? That's what gives your paper the nice color. Helps to blend these all together to make it a little bit more natural looking. Once you get down here, you want to make sure that you're kind of going away from the torn paper. So I'm just kind of starting on the scrap paper and moving up. 
you might even need to gather a little bit more dust with like a neutral color, something a little bit lighter, and that'll help to blend those colors together. And don't forget, if you make any errors or mistakes, we are going to be covering a lot of this sky up with trees. So if there's a part that you really don't like, put a tree in front of it. No big deal. All right, I think that's good for my sky. So I'm going to do the big reveal, which is always a really fun part, and carefully peel this tape off. And there we have a nice crisp edge for the snow. I would highly recommend washing your hands at this point so that you're not going to be getting paint uh, mixed in with this chalk pastel. So I'm going to pause right now to clean up your surface area. Okay, now I have my painting area set up. I have a cup of water, I have a variety of paint brushes, and I also just use the rest of the scrap that I used to tear off the snow. I'm just gonna use that as a little paint palette. So any black and white paints, I use these Crafters acrylic, they work fine. I'm going to be making a gray for the trees. So you want it to be a pretty light gray, but it can't be white or else it wouldn't contrast with the snow. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna add Kind of a large blob of white. And then just a tiny bit of black. A little bit of this black paint goes a really long way. So I'm just going to put it right over there so I can add a little bit at a time. Go ahead and, like I said, it's just a tiny bit of black. Mix it in with this white to get it gray. And the good news is you can always darken it up if you don't think that that's dark enough. But once you put it on this white, I bet it will be enough difference that you'll, you'll be okay with it. So for mine, I'm gonna do four trees. So I'm gonna stagger them. Some of them might be in the foreground, which would mean it's closer to the bottom of the page. Some might be closer to the background. They appear smaller. this scrap cardboard and just trim off a couple inches and what this is going to be used for try and make that as straight as possible we're going to add black paint to give the appearance of the peeling off bark of the birch trees so I'm just gonna go ahead and dab this cardboard into this black paint and start at the left side of the tree and lightly drag it over the tree. You can flip sides. Some might be more, some might be less. You can add it to your liking. But just like in nature, some of these are going to naturally have more bark peeling off and more of the white tree showing. Another trick, you could use this top part to just get a small amount of black paint if you want to do these small twigs. And I'm pressing very lightly here. And that's it for that portion. The last thing we need to do is to add some of the shadows like I added here into the snow. Now the trick to these shadows is to give it more of a watercolor look. You don't want it to be black. The shadows aren't typically that dark. So I'm just going to water down a little bit of this paint that I already have on here. Maybe add some white. To make another gray but the water is really key we're kind of turning the acrylic into watercolor paints here and then whichever direction you decide to make your shadows go i'm going to assume the sun is here so the shadows are going to be casting to this maybe a five o'clock four o'clock shadow and then i'm just going to go ahead and carefully draw the shadows you are more comfortable doing this in pencil first. You're more than welcome to do that. This one's going to overlap with the tree. Can you come in there? Once I have those lines drawn, I'm really just going to kind of go in and add some water. When working with this type of paint, adding water to it, it's important to work quickly because you don't want it to dry. You do want it to have that watercolor look still. Edges, trying to blend that gray paint in. And again, if you want yours a little bit lighter, add a little bit more white. You can dilute it a little bit more with the water. 
Once you're finished with that, you can let it dry. Take your tape off. Some people like to use an old toothbrush to put snow on. Sometimes I like to just add some white paint onto a brush. And then you can kind of just dab it on like that. So if you want that as a finishing touch, make it a little snowy landscape. And it's a little bit more realistic. Thank you so much for joining me today to make this beautiful winter landscape. I hope you enjoyed it and we'll see you back soon.